So uh, I posted homework six yesterday and I thought before we do anything else, let's go over it just to make sure that everyone understands what is expected. Um, so the first function, um, so part one that is, five points. Uh, create a function that given a height and a piece of string, this string will contain one character in it. It can be a dollar sign, it can be an ampersand, it can be a hashtag, it can be anything. Using that character, I want you to console log a diamond. Should be fair, it's very similar to the, the triangle that you guys did earlier. Um, and I want you to do this using recursion. I also, in number two, want you to do the same thing, but using for loops. The first one is using recursion, the second one is the same thing, but using for loops. Fair enough, so I want you to know how to do both. I want you to loop as with recursion, I want you to know how to loop with for loops. So, any questions up until this point? No. Okay, good. So let's continue. Um, so then, I want you guys to write tic Who does not know what I mean by tic-tac-toe? Kristikinoliki. Who does not know what Kristikinoliki is? Okay. <laughs> But do you know what tic-tac-toe is? You, you, you do? Oh, you don't. Okay. All right. So for those of you who don't know what tic-tac-toe is, let me show you. Let's, huh? Let's play tic-tac-toe. There is a link. Here it is. Yeah? But still, just so, you know, because it's going to be fun. Okay, there it is. So I go. Okay. Okay. Okay, all right, so this is ultimately what you're going to write. This is one of the things that you need to write, but we'll get to this in a moment. We go step by step. Okay, so we all understand what tic-tac-toe is? Yes? Okay. So, going back to the homework. Okay, so look, as part of our game data, we need to represent the board, right? And the board, it makes sense because it's like a grid. It makes sense to use a two-dimensional array. What is a two-dimensional array? It's an array of arrays, okay? So this is an array here, as you can see. This is an array. Inside of it, there are three arrays, one for each row. And then each of those rows has three values, either an X, if it's an X, an O, if it's an O, or an empty string. Clear? Empty string being empty. No one has played there yet. Any questions so far? Okay, now, your third, the third thing you need to do for this project is to implement a function called next move. What is next move? Next move is a function that will decide what the next move should be. Okay? What do you need to know what the next move is? You tell me. Forgetting what I wrote here. If I asked you, hey, what should be the next move on the game? The board. You would say, what game? And who's playing? And who's playing? Are you an X or an O? Right? Okay. So it's a function call that given a board and which one you are, if you're an X or an O, you then make a decision, and the decision is the location where you want it to go. Make sense? Now, that location is an array of two values. The x-coordinate and the y-coordinate. Okay? So, you can think of it this way. You have your... Hang on. If you have an array... Hang on. One, two, three. One, two, three. Can everyone see this? Did I hear no? Who said no? Okay. So in here, suppose I had X, and here I had O, and here I had empty string. Here I have an empty string, here I have empty string, here I have empty string, empty string, empty string, sorry, empty string, empty string. Okay. So this is the board, right? This is board, board equals that, okay? Now, if I wanted to know what the 
value is at this position, what code would I have to write? I would first have to get this array, right? So I would have to do board. What index is this array? Two. two. Zero, one, two. Good. So two. And then in this array, which index is this? Two. two. So I would say something like if this is triple equal to empty string, then I know it's empty and I can do something. Make sense? Okay. Um, good. Now, it's important to note that the next move function does not modify this array. You don't change anything. All you do is you return to me. If you wanted to make your move here, you would return an array containing what? 2-2. Two, two. If you wanted to put your, your thing, whatever, if you're next dx, if you're uh, here, what would be the location? Right, this array, which is 1, this first index, which is 0. So you would return a 1, 0. Make sense? So your next move returns an array that contains in it two values, which are the coordinates of where you, should, you want to put the next move. Any confusion about this? That's how here I was playing with some magic genie. Look, when I click something, oh, what was that? Where did the zero come from? Where, magic, right? Somewhere from the beyond. Ooh, that was fun. So there's some code that decides where this O should go. That's magically putting it there, right? Right? Okay. That's the function you're writing. The next move is your artificial intelligence. It's the game brain. It's the, bra it's the code that decides what the next move should be. Make sense? Okay, yes. Should we make an unbeatable code? Good. So uh, there's extra credit if you make it a strong algorithm, that is to say unbeatable and so on, then you have to make a video. You earn extra credit. So yes, but for now, for anyone who does not want to do the extra credit, your next move function simply has to do this. Return up a location that is legal. In other words, don't, don't return a location that already has something there, right? If you return zero, zero, that's a wrong, that you can't do that, right? Because there's already an X there. Make sense? Also, you, you have to stay in the bounds. If you do four, four, that's like out here, right? There is no four, four. That's also wrong. So your job is to return any legal move. Like random legal move? You can make add random. You don't have to add random. If you want to, you can. But just make sure it's legal. How you do it is up to you. I don't care. Yes. Should we implement this with the canvas? Okay, so so far, I repeat, there is no rendering, nothing crazy. It's just a function that given a board and is x, is x, what kind of value is expected for a variable called is? Exactly, a boolean. And if it's true, then is x is true, so you are x. If it's false, then you're o. Make sense? So if I give you a board and I say is x true, it means decide where you want to put the x. If is, is x is false, decide where you want to put the o. Any questions so far? Also, keep all of the logic that decides where, where the next move should be inside the next move function. Don't reference anything outside. If you want to add more functions, do it, but add it inside that function. Sort of package up all of your next move code into that one function. Any questions so far? Should I move on? Okay, so we understand that we need a function to decide what the next move should be. That's number three. Um, oh, uh, okay, number four. Implement a function called make move. What does make move do? Make move takes three arguments. It takes the board, it takes the location where you want to make the move, and is x. Is x being, if it's true, you're an x, if it's false, you're an o. And its job is to modify the board to match the location and is x. 
In other words, if I called is x, suppose this is the board I give the move, next move, or sorry, make move. And I say is x is true, and location I say, you know, 1, 1. What it should do is find a location 1, 1, that's here, and change this to be, if is x is true, x. Got it? Yeah. Make move modifies the board to reflect the new move, to reflect the new location. Any questions? And, okay, how would I modify this location, by the way? I would do board. One. One. Is X. That's it. Now this turns into X. There. Yes? Does it have to have an event listener? No. No event listeners, no, nothing, we've not, not done absolutely nothing with DOM, Canvas, so far none of that exists. It's literally just a function, and all you know is the board, the location, and is X or true or false. If it's false, then you put zero, oh, here. Like X or O appearing when you click on the board. Heto, heto, so far no clicking, no Canvas, wait. To, to get 10 points for number four, all you need is that one function. Forget clicking, forget canvas. Okay? By the way, this is how you write programs. You don't right away build the whole thing. You write pieces. One part decides the next move. One part makes the move. One part that, that, and then you put it together and you have your big awesome game. Cool? So, so far we just have two functions. One decides the next move, two makes the move. Any questions up until this point? Keep going? Okay. So, the next, and here are examples by the way. Look, if I say make move and I give it this board here, and I say 1-1 one, one for the location, and true, true implying it, we're working as X, what the board should turn into is this. That was the example we did here. Then after that, if I call make move again with a board and one two and false, false meaning O, right? Where is one two? Where one it's one is this, zero, one, two, that's here, so this turns into O. Fine? Any confusion about this? Okay, let's keep going. Uh okay. Uh, implement a function called find winner. Okay, this is important. Anytime you have a game, you need code that decides if it's over, right? In what situations would a game like this be over? Tell me. X is our board diagonally. Right. Or right. So if X wins, if Y wins, or if it's a tie. Fair? Right, exactly. <clears throat> so what your jo the job of this function is this, to decide who won and, and this is important, this is where a lot of people are going to get confused, you need to tell me the locations of all the places that made that, that, um, that made X, for example, win. In other words, suppose you had a board like this, wait. Suppose you had x, 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 and then a bunch of other stuff, like you had o here, that may be empty here, you had o here, you had o here, one, two, three, one, two, three, okay. Suppose you had a board like this, and this was the board that was given as input to, uh, win to uh, what's the function? Find winner. <coughs> Everyone see that board? What should you return? First of all, who won? Yeah. X won. So you need to return winner is X as an object, an attribute winner X, winner being who won, X being X won. And then this is the part that matters, winning locations. Tell me what locations resulted in X winning. So in this case, looking at the board, what is this location here? Zero, zero. One. 
one. And this location here? Two, two. Good. Each one of these is an array, and you return an array of those things, see? An array of arrays, where each thing is, has two numbers in it. These two numbers. The reason why you might want this is this. Look, in this game, for example, let's have someone win. Wait. Um, so, okay, I'm going to win now, right? Watch what happens. Ooh, it flashes. How do you know which locations to flash? This will tell you. Make sense now? You understand why we're doing this. So that, so, so winning location tells you who won and how. The locations that made it win. Got it? And if you know the locations, then you can do some animation on it. You can turn it, change color, or you can do whatever to make or draw a line on it. You can make it obvious that this was the combination that resulted in X winning. If O won, the same thing except o, winner is O. And the third option is nobody won. So you just do winner, none. You don't need winning locations because there is no winner. There is no winning location, right? So you just do winner and you write none. So that means when I call this function, if I get nothing back, if I just get undefined, nothing happened, just keep going. If I get something back, I just check the winner. Is winner none? If so, it's a tie. Is winner O? If so, O1. Is winner X? If X, then X1. Any questions or concerns about what I just said? It's clear? Okay. So, once you have the ability to make a move, sorry, to decide on a move, to make the, the move, and to check who won, you have everything you need to simulate a game, an actual game. So, in number six, we're going to do exactly this. I want you to have a loop. You can use a, whatever loop you want. You could use recursion if you want. You can also use a for loop, a while loop, a do what, I don't care. Just a loop. And in this loop, you're basically going to do the same thing over and over. In the first situation, you're going, is x is going to be true. You're going to call um, next move, which will give you a position. You're going to call make move to make that move. And then you're going to call, you know, who won. If that function tells you someone won, you break out of the loop and you alert, you know, somebody won. If not, you go again, but you change is x to the opposite. In other words, if is x was true, it should now be false. That is to say, it should be O. If it was O before, flip it so it's now x. And do the same thing again. And, you keep, and what ends up happening is you simulate x and O playing each other using your next move function. Charles Gatsach. Charles Gatsach. Okay. You have a next move function that decides what the next move should be. Right? First, we call it with x. We update the board and we check if it, if it won. If, not, if it won, the game is over. If not, do it again for O. If O won, we end the game. If not, do it again for X. Do it again for O. Do it again for X. Do it. Keep doing this until one of them wins. How's that, Sasha? Simulate says on them. You're simulating the game using a simple loop. Does this make sense to you? Any questions about this? Remember, remember that you can break out of any loop using break. The break call, right? And when would you break from the simulation? When the game is over? When is the game over? Actually, there are, there are four conditions. I didn't talk about one of the conditions. So one condition is that x1. If x wins, you end the game. Another is o1. If O wins, end the game. Another is a tie, but there's one more. The other one is if make move returns negative one. Where's make move? Um, next, next move, make move, this one. So make move, uh, Uda? make move. Blah, blah, blah. 
Okay. The next move function, the, its job is to give it a location and is x to actually modify the board, right? That's what next move does. If the location is invalid, that means you're trying to modify a location that already has an x or an o, or the location is outside the bounds of the board, you need to return a negative one. And then in your simulation, check if its call returns negative one. If so, break and show an alert saying, you know, X created, did an invalid move. Game over. You lost. Disqualified. Make sense? In charge on. Imagine you have a next move function, right? Suppose it, for this, it returns zero, zero. That's invalid, right? There's already an X on zero, zero. Kari vira portsmas kardanel. Kam bortis durs. 4-4. Four, four. It's not in the, bo in the board, right? I mean, in our user interface or whatever, we won't have 4-4. Four, four. You have a function called next move, right? Okay, let me give you guys some more insight. One of the things I'm considering doing, don't hold me to this, but I want to eventually, those of you who actually write interesting next move functions, I want to play them against each other and see who wins. Tie. You get yeah. Well, the good ones will tie. Uh, let me say that again. I want to take your artificial intelligence, your AI, your next function calls, and play them against each other, and see who won. Okay. Um, so it's not just about clicking. You're just calling a function. What if that function was implemented incorrectly? You have to account for that case. Yeah. Okay. Um, any questions up until now? Yes? I'm not sure how we would go about uh, doing the check that if someone won. Oh, easy. Okay. So, f okay. Oh, if someone won. Okay. So, a simple way, I'll just tell you the simplest way, right? How do you know if you can win by having three in a row, right? So, one combination might be this way, right? How would you check if somebody won this way? The three values are the same. Exactly. Then you check this one, then you check this one, then this one, then this one, then this one. That's six checks, right? Plus this one and this one. Eight checks. That's it. Eight if statements. Fair? And if you do that into a func in a function, actually you can just check that, and if they're all the same, figure out, well, what is it? Is it X or O? And then return winner, X, O, or whatever, and then location is the location of those three things. Winning locations. Yeah? Bata you got it? Cool. Can you explain the next move again? If, uh, if X is, for example, 0, 0, it was chosen, the next one. Put it anywhere except 0, 0. So return a, an array of two values that is not 0, 0, but is inside of the box. Not just X. No, the location. Tera, Udenem. You guys all play chess, right? Okay, it's one thing to say like B5 or whatever, horse B5. It's another thing to actually physically take the horse and move it there, right? So two different functions. One decides where to go, the other one actually does it. And the third one checks if someone won. Okay, so we have three functions. Make the decision, make the move, check who won. Yes? Yeah, invalid move and 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 then the simulation. Alert ara u Yeah. Good so far. Any questions? You understand what I mean by simulation? Okay. Once you've done all these things and it all works, that is when you start building a user interface. What is a user interface? A UI. A UI. <laughs> Thanks. What is a UI? <laughs> what is a user interface? It's like a of the engine, uh, of the cards. Yeah, it's the medium through which you communicate with the system. In this case, the tic-tac-toe board, like the physical canvas, is the interface between you and all this code that you wrote underneath, right? It's how you interact with the board, this two-dimensional array. Okay, so we need to build a user interface. For that, we will use canvas. Let's see, anything interesting here? Okay, 
um, deciding who goes first should be done with a variable that we can just flip. If you know some HTML and you want to add a select box that allows me to change who goes first, do it. That's awesome. But you don't have to. Just make a variable saying like user goes first or a computer goes first. Go. Make it like every time you go first, you yeah, have the computer. It's just the user. No, that's what I mean. Like have a variable that decides. Yet a variable of Mizevia, Mishtensa, had a variable of Pochenk yet. Yeah, but that's not fun. <laughs> I think here the example is like only the. Let's, let's see, let's try it. I think they have a toggle here. Uh, where is it? Hang on. So here, yeah, user goes first, right? Okay, and then let's see what this does. Oh, this is two player. Oh, this is you against yourself. Wait. Ah! <laughs> I think it decides that. Oh, actually, you can do that. That's not bad. You can decide who goes first at random. So randomly choose if you go first or the computer goes first. Every time you start a game, fair, fair, right? That's what they do. Okay, you can also make Just do as good as this game. Okay, if you want to add more complex logic, do it. I will, I'm only happy when you add code. Okay. Um, so, how do you write this? So, I've given you some hints. So, pay attention. This is important. This is how I would write it. You don't have to do it this way, but this is what I suggest you do. Um, so, first of all, you have a draw function, right? Which is the part that draws things on the screen. The draw function should just read your board and draw it on the screen. That's all it does. It reads the board, two-dimensional array, and just puts it on the screen using pictures, or you can just draw lines, or you can either draw it yourself or take pictures, images, and do draw images everywhere. Whatever you want to do. Any questions or concerns about how you would draw a tic-tac-toe board on canvas? Everyone kind of knows how you could do it? Yeah. Yeah, you can put a ninja and yeah, do whatever you want. <laughs> the interface can look however you want as long as it's, but it has to be tic-tac-toe. You can't just, okay, fine. Uh, question so far. Okay, good. So you understand how to draw the board. Next thing is in your update function, this is where you're updating data. Um, Run next move if it's the computer's move. Okay? So if it's the turn for the computer, run next move. And then run... Um, every time you make a move, remember, you need to call uh, the function that actually modifies the board. How come I didn't... Next move, if it's the computer, turn every time. You should, oh, here I should have added also call make move. Sorry, here I should do next move and then make move. Next move only tells you where to go. Make move actually modifies the board. So next move, make the move, and then called find winner. Find winner is something you should do every time you call make move. Why? Because make move modifies the board. Every time the board changes, you want to see if somebody won. If you want to optimize it, sure, you don't have to. And in Kampuchur Banda, was mess on on Tatara, make us a false system, make us undefined this, just on But yes, you can optimize it. You're, you're absolutely right, yeah. Um, okay, so then the other thing that's left is to get a click event from the user. I give you the click event. You just do canvas.add event listener, click. You have an event object that has two things, offset X, offset Y. Those are the locations of where the user clicked on your canvas. You basically do a hit test, right? You, you say where, you know, which region did they click? And then you call make move for that location. Be careful. What if I click on a part of the board that already has an X? What should happen? Nothing. Just nothing. Just 
do nothing. Look, look at what this guy does. Let me click here. See, nothing. If I click here, it, it works. Now let me click here again, or here again. Nothing, right? It does not make a move. Here it makes a move. Got it? So check if it's a valid move. If it's invalid, just don't do anything. If the call to your next move function returns an invalid, then yes, end the game. But if the user clicking clicks in the wrong place, no, don't end the game. Abras. Askasar? Nay. Yerku Zevka, make a funksait stanas location and make a user click on the stanas location. Che? Et funksan, can't even do kek gere, garwas halek gere. Garwain funksan um dem du karvumes. But user click on Okay? Cool. Um, other questions or concerns? Okay. The actually that's it. That's the whole game. That's how you write tic tac toe. Kind of easy, no? Um, I would. I, I ask you to enhance it as much as you can. Add sound. Add colors. Add animation if you can. You know, do something fun with it. Don't just. If you can write the game quickly, enhance it and make it better, so that you can add it to your portfolio of things. Because it's on GitHub. Whatever you can show it to your future employees. You can show it to your friends. You get the idea. Yes. More time. No. We have midterms. You, you have mid. Didn't you just have midterms? <laughs> when do you have midterms? Eleven. And when is this due? Ten. Um, how many days do you need extra? <laughs> Okay, what if you did this assignment in the next two days? Then you would have all the time to study for your exams. <laughs> How much time you guys okay, be reasonable. I'm willing to work with you. When do you actually want to have the deadline be? Sunday. Sunday. Uh, midnight. Sunday. When does it do now? Sunday. No. First. Friday. It's Friday. It's due Friday, and you want it Sunday. Yes. So you want a two-day extension. Oh. 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 Is it Kani or Amiat? Nike, Ellie, calendar, Balsak Nike, Miat. Yet go. Huh? Oh, oh, thank you, sir. This will be really helpful. Oh, thank you, Arman. You're awesome. Building a tic tac toe game with AI. Cool. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. I, I don't know. Ah, there you are. You're awesome. Thank you. Um, guys, seriously, just tell me, what day is, is the homework due? Right now, when is it due? Just remind me. Friday. Friday. You want to do Sunday? No. No, 15. Please, Wednesday. <laughs> what? Okay, I'll give you, wait, listen. I'll give you a two-day extension. That way you have it until the end of Sunday. Come on, let's work with me here. Okay, okay, two day extension. Naira Jan, work on Shem Kavalatsnes, here goes Bani Bira. Good. Okay, good. Everyone happy now? Okay, good. You're welcome. Okay. Uh, no more questions about the homework. Can I close this? How many forms are we going to do? As much as I can squeeze in, I don't know. <laughs> I'm having fun with these homeworks, so I'm going to do a lot. Um, close, that's it, we're done? Okay.
Let me show you guys something cool. Wait. Okay, in your browser, you have an object called local storage. This is an object that is available to you, just like the math object. Ah, Sus! It's an object that is available to you and it has some functions on it. Specifically, it has a set item on it and a get item on it. Uh -huh. The set item takes two strings, a key, ABC, and a value, like, yay, okay. Only strings? Only strings. The, whoa, that was fun, hang on, control plus, okay. The get item, what do you think the get item takes? Oh yeah, sorry. Ah, sorry, not my computer, okay. Okay, this takes the key, ABC, and it returns, yay, the value. So this takes a key and a value, this takes a key and gives you back the value. Okay? No, it just returns a string. It returns a string. Uh, no, what it does is it stores it in memory inside of your browser. Why is this local storage thing kind of cool? If you do this and you close your browser, and you open it again, and you call get item, you will get the value that you stored in the previous iteration. But only one. Nope, you can do more. You can do set. Oh, if you use the same key? Yeah, then you're overriding, yeah. But you can use different keys, so you can have different values stored. Um, now, here's the thing. For security reasons, you don't have access to anything that any website have ever stored. You only have access to the data that was stored from your address, from your uh, domain. So if you're, you go to Facebook.com and Facebook's code does set item, only you can, if they do get item, they can only do that when the address is Facebook.com. You understand why, right? Because you wouldn't want a different site to then be able to access the stuff that Facebook puts in. Make sense? It's called sandboxing. It's like blocking. You're saying this is yours, this is yours. So each website has its own storage, basically. And they can add to it or remove from it. Oh, you can also do remove item. Don't worry about that. Um, when is this useful? Why am I telling you this? Because you guys have a game which is a representation of your game, right? What moves are going on, what bullets are flying, what's whatever. What if the user wanted to save the game and then come back to it later, right? How do you save a game? Well, I told you that you can save a string, but a game, remember, is an object, right? So you can't just, if you had a, something like this, con, oh, sorry, um, const game, and then you had things in it like, you know, hero, which is an object, which has, let's say, an X position of one and a Y position of two, let's say. There's, there's more, but this is enough. You can't just do this. Oop. Is there, a uh, there is a limit, yeah. I don't know what, I think it's different on different browsers. So you can't do this because, like I said, this takes a string. So how can we represent a JavaScript object in a stringified form? And you, JSON, exactly. What you do here is you say json.stringify that thing, that game, that will turn that object into a string. Then later when you get ABC back, let's go back here. You can then do JSON, actually you can do here, JSON, mm, JSON dot parse. What does parse do? The opposite, right? It, 
goes from the stringified version back into an object. And now you have this new ABC, which is your new game that you can now use to have the latest game. Anyone confused about what I just said? Let me say this one more time. You have an object. This object can be turned into a string using json.stringify. You can go back to an object from that string by calling json.parse. Uh, what does parse mean? Okay, yeah, talk about it. Local storage is the object which has various methods on it, functions. Set item is one of them. And get item is one of them. Is this unclear to anybody? Okay. So that means all of you know how to save a game. Right? You just take the object and you serialize it. That is to say you store it into your local storage as json.stringify. And then you can parse it back out and continue later. Yes? Yes. So does that mean that no one else can access that same thing? Yeah, so Facebook, if you write this, and look, I'm running it under, under rubenmeshchen.com, right? Right now. If, you, if, you, if I now go to Facebook, and Facebook does you know, local storage.getabc, they will not be able to read this data. the same website when someone else accesses it. Okay, so this, okay, that's another thing. Local storage, local. What does local mean? Local means, yeah, so local, it's not modifying on a computer, it's modifying in your browser. It's storing it literally in your browser that is on your computer. So that means if I opened up Firefox and went to the same address, I would not get the value because it's stored in the Chrome browser. Is there any way you can change it? Yeah, but you, you have to now not store it locally, you have to send it to your server so that your server can send it to everybody else. That's a whole different thing. But if you just want to store it for yourself, so that later when you open it, it's there, you can store it using local storage. And also delete. Yeah, just remove item, I think. Yeah. It's a delete item or remove item, one of those two things. But you can like uh, also change it by saving another. Yes. If you call set, ABC, set item ABC again, it will override the previous with whatever the new value is. Yes, exactly. Good. Uh, what time is it? Ooh, it's time. Ho hope you had fun. Let's take a photo. <laughs>